Hello everybody, welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. This is episode 2 of our G1000 tutorial series. In this video, what we will do is we will take off and I'll climb to at about 1500 feet, pitch the aircraft and then we will go and take a look at what each autopilot function provides uh, in the G-Tower 1000 unit. Uh, if you haven't seen the first episode where I explain the functions of each button and knob and the information on the screens, I highly suggest you to go and check that video out. I'll place the video link to the description. And if you want to get notified for the future episodes, please subscribe and don't forget to turn on the notifications. Without further ado, let's get into the cockpit and let's get this bird up into the air. Okay, let me check a couple things here. Everything looks good. I think we are ready to roll. Full power. Release the parking brake. And we are good to go. Alright, let's keep her at the center as much as we possibly can. Airspeed is live. coming sixty five and rotate good let's follow the runway heading for a while I'll pitch the aircraft so that we have a nice climb let's see and climbing at about 80 knots which is the best climbing speed for Cessna so let's get closer to the autopilot continue for north departure I will contact you next when you leave my airspace let me get this ATC Innsbruck Tower TR 1453 continue for north departure okay so this button as we discussed before engages the autopilot but we need to set something for in, in terms of what function we want to use before we turn it on. So as of now, let's just synchronize the heading to our current one and let's turn on the heading hold mode. What this will do is as soon as I engage the autopilot, it will going to keep our current heading, which is this blue heading bar, and try to maintain that. As you see, I turned the autopilot on and now the airplane is tracking the current heading. However, we see a mountain range in front of us and I don't want to run into those mountains. So what we can do is we can aim for this left side over here by just turning this heading knob and adjusting our heading to roughly about 330 degrees. And or 300, yeah, it's, it's a little bit too much. Let me go back. You're gonna smash in a mountain if I do it. But this this, this looks good enough for now. So we are following the volley. So let's just set us to an altitude of 4,000 feet. And one rule I want to discuss about is when you are traveling west, you have to select an even thousand plus 500 as your altitude. When you are traveling east, you have to select an odd thousand plus 500 when you are setting your altitude. And this is an um, aviation rule that everybody follows all right so how we are going to get to this altitude let me just do it 6000 how we are going to climb there there are a couple ways of doing it one is selecting a vertical speed and adjusting how many feet we want to climb per minute let's try that first but please be in mind this aircraft's autopilot system has no idea and has no control over your throttle setting. So you are in charge of the power. If you don't give it her enough yeah, power to climb... Are leaving my airspace frequency change approved. Okay, I should have turned off the ATC. Innsbruck Tower TR-1453 frequency change. Uh, if you don't give her enough power, you might risk yourself to a stall 
uh, if that happens. So. Squawk 2766. Squawk 2766 TR1453. Okay. Let's select the vertical speed mode. I press it, and as you see, nothing happens. Why is that? Well, because I haven't told the aircraft what to do yet, so it's going to try to maintain the current vertical speed, which is zero, that's displayed here. So I need to bring the nose up to increase the vertical speed. Let's just do 500 feet per second. So now, the aircraft will try to Copy TR to climb at 500 feet per minute if I gave her enough power. The other thing I want to note is when you pass about 4,000 feet, the air is less dense. So that means if your mixture is 100%, you're feeding the engine too much fuel and choking the engine because there is not enough oxygen and air to burn all the fuel you're feeding to her. So let's just bring the mixture a little bit. As you see and heard, now the engine started to breathe better and it started to generate more power. So that's something you need to uh, remember when you are climbing above 4000 feet. Uh, you have to play with the mixture a little bit to find your uh, setting. Okay, so that's vertical speed and we are climbing towards 6000 at 500 feet per minute. What else we can do? Well, the other thing we can do is the flight level change mode. So this does the same thing, but then it will try to maintain the speed we have. So and I, if I turn engage and turn it on, as you see, it's trying to maintain 87 knots while it's trying to keep us climbing to 6,000 feet. And you can adjust the speed by pressing these buttons and changing it up or down. So 80 knots is a good climb speed for Cessna 172. So I'm gonna maintain that. And this is the second way of changing your altitude into, in other terms, changing your vertical navigation. So the third way of doing it is this VNAV mode. This also ties to your flight plan that you configured, which I already have one here, which we have uh, not been following since takeoff. But I created a flight plan that will take us from Innsbruck to Munich. So, and that's followed by our GPS on our uh, compass. So, as if you remember, we have three different modes. VOR1 is our NAV1 radio uh, source. VOR2 is our NAV2 radio source and the GPS is our uh, flight map, uh, flight plan and GPS source. So it will follow the flight plan if you, if you are on GPS mode. And how do I do that? Well, pretty easy. Now we are at heading select mode, but when I select the NAV mode, as soon as I turn it on, you will see the aircraft will bank to the right and try to maintain the heading that we set for north and try to join this uh, line as soon as possible. So let's just try that. Okay, now as you see, we started to turn right and it's a good idea to, to look out from the window so that we don't run into any mountains. But as you see, the aircraft is turning around and it's gonna lock that signal and keep that heading uh, until we join that line, the magenta line, and then it will keep following that magenta line from there. So that's the navigation mode that allows you to follow your flight plan. And hopefully we will not run into those mountain range or we might have to climb a little bit higher, which I will try to do right now. So let's just select 8000 and let's just select the flight level change mode and set us for 80 knots. Oops, a little bit fast. All right, and we will climb at 80 knots and try to uh, avoid that mountain range that's ahead of us uh, when we are trying to join 
our GPS uh, flight plan route. So that's the navigation mode and you need to have a nav source plugged in for that mode to work. Either it's a VOR beacon that you set up the frequency for and following VOR1 on your CDI, the course deviation indicator, or a nav2 source either it's a DME or VOR beacon or your GPS source. Without that, the nav mode is not going to work. <coughs> the VNAV mode also goes in correspondence with your flight plan uh, if you set an altitude or cruising altitude for your flight plan. When you turn it on, then the aircraft will try to climb to that altitude you set for your flight plan. Okay, and also this is critical to keep that VNAV mode on if you want your aircraft to capture a uh, localizer and do an ILS approach to a specific runway. Without VNAV mode, you won't be able to descend uh, to, to get to that uh, glide or capture the glide slope and descend. Also, the, the, the approach mode also helps you to descend when you capture the localizer and the glide, glide slope, but until that point, if you are cruising towards that air, uh, airport, uh, you have to have VNAV turned on to descend or uh, climb based on your fly, uh, flight plan. Okay, so that's the uh, VNAV mode. We have looked at the flight level change and vertical speed modes as well, and we have looked at the NAV mode, which will allow you to follow your uh, created or entered flight plan. We looked at the vertical navigation mode. One thing, I think this is the last thing that uh, I'm going to show, and the flight director is going to put these magenta lines on your uh, display. So this is what you need to maintain uh, to follow your navigation source in this case, if you are hand flying the aircraft at that time. Let's make sure we are not going to run into those mountains. And looks like we are going to be okay. So one last thing I want to show for the autopilot functions is the altitude hold mode. But to do that I'm going to wait us to climb uh, up to our cruising altitude of 8000 feet. And notice when we get there, uh, the flight level change will automatically turn off or if you are at a V speed mode uh, it will automatically turn off and the, the aircraft will switch to altitude hold mode to hold that altitude we set. Let's wait until we get to 8000 and see, see what happens. Okay, looks like we are almost going to clear that mountain range although uh, we might as well think about climbing a little bit more but let's just try this altitude hold mode because we are at 8000 and as you see here it's saying ALT that means the autopilot is trying to maintain our current altitude and as you see because we are not climbing anymore we started to pick up some speed as well um, and if you check here the vertical speed mode is turned off and the flight level change mode is turned off so let's say we want to climb to 10,000 at a speed of 80 knots again, because 100 knots is not a good climbing speed for this aircraft. So as you see now, I started to climb again to clear that mountain range. As soon as we get there, these modes will turn on, but bear in mind, if you are climbing too high in a Cessna, you are risking your aircraft for potential icing so let's just turn on the pedo heat and turn off the landing lights the rest can stay on uh, so do not try to climb too high of an altitude with a Cessna 172 as you see we're getting close to our uh, flight plan route as soon as we get close to that magenta line here the aircraft will bank left and try to follow that line uh, as best as possible. 
So as you see, the aircraft is holding 80 knots while we are crumbling 400 feet per second. So I think it is fair to say the best climbing speed for this aircraft is between 75 and um, 80 knots or between 400 to 500 feet per minute uh, for Cessna 172. So this will change based on the aircraft you're trying to fly. Okay, let's get up to 10,000 feet and I'll probably wrap up the video as soon as we join this line and when aircraft starts to follow the line because that's all you need to know and remember about the, air, uh, the autopilot mode of the G1000 unit. Uh, make sure you adjust your heading and it is a good practice to synchronize time to time to your current heading just in case if something goes wrong you can turn on the heading hold mode and keep your current heading while you are trying to figure out what was wrong uh, rather than aircraft banking and turning to whatever heading you set before if you don't synchronize it so it's a good practice as, as you bank and turn synchronize your heading always to the current heading you are uh, traveling to Okay, looks like we are about to join that uh, route here in a second. Let's take a look outside and see where we're at. I think that summit is what I was worried about, but looks like we cleared it uh, after climbing to 10,000 feet. There was no way that we would have made it at 8,000 feet. So now we are going to probably bank left and try to follow the valley. Uh, although this is not a airways flight plan or IFR flight plan, this is a VFR flight plan, so it's a direct flight from point A to point B. So one thing you need to make sure when you are planning a flight like this is the mountain range and the altitude you will need to fly to clear those mountains or anything that might be in your way. As you see guys, now we joined the flight plan route that I planned and the aircraft is perfectly following that route and still trying to make it to 10,000 feet as you see here we are getting close and we are you know maintaining a climb rate of 400 450 feet per minute it might be our mixture again let's just give a little bit more fuel to see if it changes anything power wise but as I said at the beginning of this video, if you are using an aircraft like this, most of them, the G1000 units, doesn't have control over the power. In other words, control over the throttle. So throttle is your responsibility as the flying pilot. And the autopilot can uh, control your vertical and lateral navigation if you plan it accordingly and use the correct modes on your autopilot functions. Alright guys, I think this is going to be it for the autopilot tutorial video. Um, I will probably try to post another episode of the tutorial Wednesday uh, next week. Until then, uh, take care of yourself and if you are enjoying the content, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications. See you next time.